Hey guys, Ivan here, and I have an interesting idea, an interesting question for you guys. Will classic physique ever surpass bodybuilding, open bodybuilding division? And before you answer, just please hear me out. I'm sure many of you won't even listen to 15 seconds of this video, and you will just reply to the title or the thumbnail and be like, oh no, bodybuilding is the best, that's the bread and butter of the sport, mass, mass, more muscle, uh. So please don't be like that, just hold on a second. I have an interesting idea actually. So listen to this video and then answer whatever you think. Let's go back to the question why Classic Physique was actually even created. Well, if you go back to 1993, when the mass monster era basically started with Dorian Yates, that was basically the first time people started complaining about bodybuilding. That's when bodybuilding became all about adding more mass and it wasn't at all about having a beautiful body, having a small waist, and overall beautiful, good-looking physique that people would actually like to have. Most people, average people, if you were walking on the beach, guys would be jealous of your physique, and girls would actually like what they see. That was before. That was before Dorian Yates' era. When Dorian first brought his 1993 shape on the stage, everybody's minds were blown. Then the same thing happened again later, in 1998, five years later, when Ronnie did the same thing pretty much. Took bodybuilding to another level of muscularity. He did the same thing five years later, in 2003, when he came even bigger. Then the same thing happened with Marcus Rule, with Big Ramy later, and so on. And everybody was blown away, everybody was truly amazed. But is that really what the bodybuilding was supposed to be? At the beginning it wasn't, but the sport evolved. If you can be bigger, have more muscle, why not have it? If you can be more shredded, more ripped, more vascular, why not? More is better, right? Well, is it? Look, I'm a huge fan of open bodybuilding. My favorite physique of all time would be Dorian Yates 1993. Then next would be probably Ronnie Coleman and Jake Cutler, Phil Heath and so on. So the big guys, for sure. But would I say that they are perfect? Absolutely not. They are not perfect because every one of them had the same flaw, and that's the waist, the stomach. Having a small, tiny waist makes your physique look so much more impressive. But can you really be 260, 70, 80 pounds shredded on stage and have a 30-inch waist or something like that? It's impossible. If you grow, you grow. If your arms grow, if your back grows, if your chest and legs grow, your waist will grow as well. There is no way around it. It will happen. Who can argue with me that Ronnie Coleman, at 280 pounds, wouldn't look better if his waist was 5 or even 10 inches smaller? But that is just wishing for things that probably won't ever happen. Or will they? Now let's actually talk about classic physique. So why was it created? It was created because many, many bodybuilding fans were complaining about mid-sections of bodybuilders that were extremely distended, and bodybuilders weren't even trying to control them. Audience didn't like this, people hated it. So, instead of fixing bodybuilding, they just created another division, which is called Classic Physique, of course. And right here I'm actually getting close to my point. So first year, Classic Physique, the winner was Danny Hester, who wasn't much of an improvement, really. All he had, different from the bodybuilders, was a flat stomach. There was no bubble gut. That was the time when he saw no bubble gut on a bodybuilding stage. Quote unquote bodybuilding, because it's still called physique. But uh, as far as second and third place, second was a rush. Third was Sadiq Hajovic, whose legs were pretty soft. And he didn't really have the best symmetry. He didn't have the best lines. He didn't really have the best, the optimal classic physique, of course. That was just the first year of classic physique. Nobody yet knew what classic physique even was. Everybody was still doubtful. Man physique guys were happy in their division. Bodybuilders were happy in their. The guys who were kind of in the middle weren't really exactly made for either one of them. Got into classic. And year after year, it was better and better. In 2017, the new winner was Brion Ainsley. In 2018, same thing again, and later it was Chris Bumstead. So we got from Danny Hester to Brian Ainsley, finally to Chris Bumstead. 
So the progress that classic physique as a division made in only four years is rather obvious. Just look at the top six today. How more gifted the guys are in 2019 than they were in 2016 when the division was actually created. Not only that we get more talented bodybuilders doing the classic physique, we also have bodybuilders who have been training for the classic physique division for at least four years since it started. With more training towards this goal, you will create a better classic physique. So that is another reason why the division grew, why it improved. The posing trunks, they were much longer 2016 and they cut them down and right now they are actually looking like posing trunks, they don't look like shorts. So you can see more of a physique, if you pull them up a little bit you can show your glutes if you have shredded glutes. So it kind of resembles bodybuilding, doesn't it? The weight cap was moved as well. Guys today can be much bigger than they were in 2016. Poses like a front lat spread, back lat spread and side tricep and also most muscular are not mandatory poses in classic physique. Which I don't like and I'm sure this will also change. Many people are criticizing this part of classic physique. So I'm sure in a year or two you will have these poses back. Maybe not the back lat spread, maybe not most muscular, but the front lat spread and side tricep for sure, for sure. The division has evolved so much in only four short years. Imagine what it will look like in 10 years, 5 years, let's say 15, 20 years from now. Arnold had a good point when he said that the judges should be judging bodybuilders based on whose physique they would rather have. If that was the criteria, the results from the shows in the past who knows how many years would be much different, but we can kind of see that in the classic physique, especially this year, 2019, with Chris Bumstead, the tall, wide shoulder guy winning the show. And with having that kind of a champion, the interest in overall bodybuilding and especially classic physique in the world grows. So with so many new people getting into the industry, with so many options to choose from, I'm sure most people will actually choose the classic physique. It's much closer to bodybuilding, it's not like man's physique, it is still bodybuilding with a weight cap, you probably don't have to force feed yourself the entire year to be so unhealthy, you can still live a normal lifestyle, have fun in life and be a champion, earn good living from bodybuilding and not destroy your health and your social life and sacrifice so many things because of open bodybuilding. So with years, I'm sure classic physique will become a bigger division, more popular and more people will actually be competing in it. It won't be reserved only for the genetic elite, only for the people who can grow 300 pounds of muscle, but it will be rather available for everybody. So if you're a fan of bodybuilding and you're wondering how would you look like if you got a lot of muscle and got shredded and learned how to pose properly, you could do that and you can, if you are lucky, become a classic physique champion, right? So with a couple of years, with a couple of decades perhaps, with the bodybuilding and fitness industry moving towards that direction, I'm pretty sure that classic physique will become more popular division than the open and it will become probably the main division. Also, I'm pretty sure that they will actually increase the weight cap so the classic physique guys can be bigger and since they actually do have a weight cap, I'm sure everybody will try to get shredded to the bones. It won't be anything like Brandon Curry type of conditioning. It will be shredded, shredded, shredded. It will be just lines, feathers all over the place. It's gonna look insane. It will just take a couple of years or a couple of decades of evolution and with more options to choose from, we will definitely choose some of the most genetically gifted bodybuilders of all time who will actually be competing in the, in the classic physique division. And imagine if guys like Phil Heath actually were competing in classic physique. If they actually stayed classic, if their waist stayed smaller, if they were actually able to monetize bodybuilding from another division, a smaller division, so they wouldn't have to sacrifice their health. I'm pretty sure that guys like that would choose that option if it was available back in the day. So with more people in the sport, with more options to choose from, with more and more genetically gifted bodybuilders, 
with the division itself changing a couple of things, adapting and becoming bigger and better, and with open division not changing at all, staying the same or even digressing like it is currently, look at the top 6 today. It was just not very good top 6. I'm sure it's a big possibility that in the future Classic Physique will be the main division and Open will be some secondary division that not many will be interested in. So that's just the idea that I thought of. If you guys agree with me, tell me down below. If you disagree, however, tell me about that. But if you enjoyed the video, please like it and also subscribe to my channel for more bodybuilding videos like this. Thank you very much guys for watching and all the best. Bye bye.